The Daily Code Snippet. Moving on to audio. The audio element works similarly to the video element. With audio, we will also want to supply more than one type of file to maximize our code. We'll work with as many browsers as possible. You can use the source element to provide options just as you did with the video element. And you can also provide paragraph text as a fallback if HTML5 audio is not supported. This text can let them know that their browser doesn't support the playback of the audio file and can also provide a link where the audio is hosted instead. So in this code example, we have provided a .mp3 file and a .ogvorbis audio file. If neither of these file types is supported, there is a link to where the file is hosted. Similar to video, the controls attribute will allow the user to adjust whether the audio plays or is paused and has a progress bar and volume control. And as an aside, if you only have one source of audio to provide, you can also use the source attribute. Are the attributes for the audio element the same as the video element? Good question. We find that there are some differences. For example, without a video component, it is unnecessary to control the width and the height nor is it necessary to support the poster attribute. However, several of the same attributes apply to the audio element. The autoplay attribute will automatically begin in playback, which again should be avoided in most cases. The preload attribute can also be set to none, auto, or metadata. As a reminder, none does not preload the audio, auto can preload the whole audio, and metadata will preload only the metadata. You would again add these attributes to the opening tag as follows in this example. Here, if the media types are supported, the audio will autoplay, but the presence of the controls allows the user to stop the playback. The file will be preloaded to assist smoother playback. Presented by Designers Learn Code.